Well, hi there, sports fans. Welcome to another exciting edition of Physics 12. Today we're going to be looking at uh, Lesson 6.2, which is on electric force on a charge. Now, we've looked at uh, Coulomb's law before, and what it simply says is that um, experiments show that the electric force between two charges is proportional to the product, in other words, the product of the charges, which is the one charge multiplied by the other charge, but inversely proportional to the distance squared between them. And so it was experiments like this where there would be a, a charged rod suspended by a fiber and another charge was brought into proximity to it and based upon the distance that it moved they knew what force was required in, or, in order to do that based upon the, uh, the force required to twist the fiber. So an experiment like this which actually came to this um, equation right here, which this is Coulomb's law. The force on two charges is the universal constant times one of the uh, charges times the other charge divided by the distance between them squared. All right, so there's your formula for force. Uh, this equation gives the, the magnitude of the force uh, between uh, charges. Now, the, the force is along the line just simply connecting the charges. So it's just the, the, uh, the direction of the force is just simply the line between the two charges. Um, so it's, it'll be an attractive force if the charges are opposite, and it'll be a repulsive force if the charges are the same, as illustrated by this uh, diagram right here. So the two charges being the same, you'll have repulsive forces, um, and if the charges are opposite, then you will have uh, an attractive force. Now note that the forces are the same on each charge, right? So that uh, the force of one on two is the same as force of two on one, and similarly uh, down here. However, uh, they are in the opposite direction, right? So where have we seen that before? With, with gravity. And so it's very similar to gravity, actually. And as a matter of fact, the formula itself is quite similar to the, um, the force of gravity formula as well. So there's our, there's our formula, and as I said, it's, it's very similar to, to gravity. The only difference is we have a different constant, and we have, uh, instead of mass, we have the, the charge. So K is the proportionality constant, and that equals uh, 8.9 times 10 to the 9. Usually we just round it to 9, so it's 9 times 10 to the 9. And Q is the charge on each object, uh, which is measured in coulombs. Uh, which we use an uppercase C to represent uh, coulombs. And the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And um, the electric charge then is quantized in units of the electric charge. In other words, it's multiple, it has to be multiples of the charge on an electron. Uh, also note that the charge on a proton is the same, uh, it's just simply uh, positive instead of negative. All right, so R then, uh, the last thing in our formula is the distance between the charges, and then uh, you have to remember to square that number. Uh, Coulomb's law, um, we also need to note, is strictly applied only to point charges not electric fields, and that will be the topic of our next lesson, is electric fields. But for now, we're just talking about uh, point charges. So in problem solving then, what we do is, uh, this is the same as uh, forces of gravity if you have more than one object, or more than two objects, I should say. And so then for multiple point charges, uh, the forces on each charge from every other charge can be calculated, and then we just simply add them as vectors. And so we will look at an example of that. So here we have uh, three point charges right here. Uh, we have Q3 is 65 microcoulomb, Q2 is 50 microcoulomb, and Q1 is a negative charge, and that is 86 uh, microcoulombs. So based upon the, the way the charges are, these two are positive, so the force of this one on this one will be in the up direction, it will be a repulsive force, and the force on this one, because it's negative, will be an attractive force. So that's how we're going to look at this uh, particular problem and based upon the numbers that we have here we're going to work through all the numbers. 
Uh, so I've made the diagram just a little bit smaller here. And so the problem here is find the net force on Q3, which is this one right up in here. So we have to find the force of uh, Q2 on Q3 and Q1 on Q3. So there's our formula for electric force. And so the force of three, or sorry, the force of one on three will then be the charge of three times the charge on one divided by the distance between them squared. So let's put those numbers in. Uh, so that's what we have here. Now we're going to make these numbers a little bit more manageable. So this is 65 microcoulombs, and this one is 86 microcoulombs. And notice I don't put the minus sign in there. So that's going to be 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 coulomb, and 8.6 times 10 to the minus 5 coulomb. And when we work that out, we get 140 newtons. So the force of 1 on 3 is 140 newtons in that direction there. So that's the force of 1 on 3. Now we're going to find the force of 2 on 3. And so again, we'll just put those numbers in. And it's going to be the uh, universal constant again, times the charge on 3, times the charge on 2. And I've already changed them from microcoulomb. I put the decimal um, there uh, already. The distance between these is 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters squared, once again. And when you work that out, you get 325 newtons. So we have the force of 1 on 3, and we have the force of 2 on 3. And so our net force then is going to, we're going to take those two vectors and we're going to add the vectors together. So the x component of our net force is just simply going to be the, the x component of the force 1 on 3. So that's that small one right there. So that'll be the force of 1 on 3 and just the x component. And um, we have the angle over here already, which is 30 degrees. So that's just simply going to be the force of 1 on 3 times the cos of 30 degrees. And we'll get that x component right there. So when we do that, then we get 140 times the cos of 30 degrees. And that works out to 121 newtons. So the x component of our net force is 121 newtons. And now we need to find the y component of our net force. And that's going to be the force of 2 on 3, uh, which is here. That's a repulsive force. So that's going to be in the up direction. Uh, and then we're going to subtract the y component, the y component of force 1 on 3. So we have this force here is a force of 1 on 3. And now we want the y component of that force, which is going to be uh, 325 minus 140 sine 30 degrees now, because that angle is 30 degrees right there. It's now that component of, the, of that force um, is going to be the sine of 30. And we get 255 newtons. All right, so we have both the, the x and the y component of our net force. And the x component is 121 newtons, and the y component is 255 newtons. And now we can find the, uh, we can get our final uh, force vector, the net force vector. So its magnitude is 282 newtons, and the angle theta, which is uh, here, I didn't put that on there, I'll put it on there now. There's our angle theta right there. And that's going to be uh, the inverse tan of 255 divided by 121. And that works out to 65 degrees. So our net force vector then, this one right here, is 282 newtons, uh, 65 degrees north of east. And that's how we solve these kinds of problems, uh, using our uh, Coulomb's law, which is the, the universal constant times the two charges, the product of the two charges, divided by the distance between them squared in meters. And if you work it, work it through step by step then, even with multiple charges like this, uh, you should have a lot of success with these kinds of problems.